In this tutorial, I'll show you how to write test automation using Nightwatch.js. It's one of the newer browser automation frameworks and has several things going for it over just a raw Selenium approach. Nightwatch is written in Node.js, which increasingly I'm finding quicker and lighter to work with than C Sharp and Java in my test automation projects. Nightwatch.js natively supports dynamic weights in the page object model, which I went over in an earlier video for Selenium and Java. And lastly, a lot of testing shops are moving to Selenium Grid, which Nightwatch supports. And that grid support allows Nightwatch.js to be used with tools like Sauce Labs and Browser Stack for cross-browser testing and parallelization. So now that I've explained that, let's get into writing our first test. All the source code here can be found on my GitHub. That's at really mellow. And I'll put a link to that in the comments. If this is the first opportunity that you've had to work with Node.js, the first thing you need to do is install it onto your computer. So to do that, we're gonna head over to nodejs.org and download Node if you haven't already. And it has installers for Windows, Mac, and Linux. So to start our test project, let's create an empty directory. I'm gonna call mine Nightwatch Intro. And then once you're inside that directory, we'll need to set it up as a Node project. And to do that, we're gonna use a command line option called npm init. npm is the Node Package Manager and it makes everything awesome. So what this npm init command does for us is create a package.json file that you see the output of here. So that allows you to do things like name and version your project. It also keeps track of any dependencies later on. So now that this directory is initialized as a node project, we can use npm to install our required files needed to run our Nightwatch tests. So the first dependency we want is Nightwatch. So we're gonna use npm to install Nightwatch and adding this save option at the end, we'll add it to the package JSON. So if you move your source files to another computer or to a coworker, all they would need to do is run npm install inside your directory and it will fetch all the dependencies automatically and install those on their computer as well. Now that we have the Nightwatch framework, we just need to install the Chrome driver and we'll use the save flag as well. And now we're gonna add two configuration files that are going to make things easier as our test suite grows. So let's create a new file and we will call that nightwatch.json. And to save time, I'm just gonna paste that in here. And this nightwatch.json file allows you to specify your source folders containing your tests and your page objects, as well as this globals path, which we're going to create next. This is where you put a lot of your common logic that will allow you to prevent a lot of code duplication, allowing your test to stay more dry. So let's create that next. Again, I'm just going to save time by copying and pasting. And since every test will need the actual Chrome driver, we're setting a constant called Chrome driver and we're saying to require that package. And also in this globals.js file, you can put the equivalent of your before all and after all test suite pre and post logic. The before will run at the beginning of our test suite and start our Chrome driver. And then once all tests are done running, it's going to stop the Chrome driver and exit gracefully. Now that we have the prerequisites set up for a Nightwatch.js test project, let's write a simple test that goes to the Google homepage and submits a search for Nightwatch. And since Nightwatch supports page objects, we might as well leverage them in this test example. If you haven't already seen my other video on why the page object model is important, you should click on the subscribe button and watch that later. But briefly, the page object model allows you to write tests with less duplication of code, which in turn makes the tests more easily refactorable when the website layout inevitably changes and breaks all your tests. So to hold our page objects, we'll create a new folder called page objects. And inside there, we'll create a new file called google.js. And inside here is basically an exportable module with several properties. The first one we'll do is the URL property. So the URL property is where Nightwatch is going to navigate to when you call the navigate method in your test. So let's set that to google.com. And next we'll be defining the elements. So this is where you can assign names to the elements you'll call in your test. And this is also where you're going to define their CSS or XPath selectors. So in our test, we're gonna be concerned about the search bar and the selector for that is going to be an input of type equal to text. The other element that we'll be interacting with is the submit button. And that one's selector is also an input. We'll use name equals button K. 
and now we have a page object defined. So now let's use it. So in a new folder called test, let's create a new file. We'll call it Google spec.js. So this will be another module.exports equals. So we're going to create a function here, which will be the test itself. So we're going to name that to Google search test. Now we're going to create a variable called Google that we're going to set equal to the page object model that we just defined. And now you can just chain commands. So we're going to do google.navigate. And like I mentioned earlier, that will use the URL property that we set on the Google page object. So this will take it to the Google homepage. And then we can assert that the title is Google. And then once we've done that, we can assert that the search bar is visible. This at symbol lets Nightwatch know we're talking about a page object element and not uh, just some text. So we're going to make sure that this search bar is visible. And then inside the search bar, we're going to set the value. So let's tell Nightwatch we're talking about the search bar again. And we're going to set the value of Nightwatch inside that search bar. And lastly, all we need to do is click the submit button. Congratulations, we've written our first Nightwatch test. So now let's run it. So now all we need to do is type Nightwatch into our root project directory. And we should start seeing some nice little output here. So Nightwatch launched the Chrome browser, executed our commands, and gave us an output here. So as you can see down below, we got a successful test execution. Nightwatch gives you a nice output down here, tells you the name of the test, as well as green check marks, letting you know the outcome of your test assertions, and it lets you know how many assertions passed, as well as how long it took to run the test. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please click the like button down below to let me know. I plan on exploring Nightwatch.js more in the future, so if you'd like to be notified of those videos, please subscribe to my channel. And as always, thanks for watching.